This is my Ratrig V Minion, a beast of a cantilever printer that I built from a kit a little over three years ago. And this is Tic Tac, a miniaturized version of it designed by Squirrelbrain, an awesome community member that's behind a handful of other mods and projects. Being a big fan of my V Minion and a sucker for tiny printers, I fell in love with the design the moment I saw it. The entire build was done over livestream with my buddy Steve Builds, and we wrapped up the series about six months ago. We had a ton of fun putting these together, and sticking with your requests of covering the projects from the streaming channel over here, today we are diving into Tic Tac. In this video, we'll take a deeper look at the project, talk about sourcing and building, and I'll share my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start off by taking a closer look at the project. Tic Tac has been around for some time, with the first version being published on printables back in April of 2022. What we built is Tic Tac 2.1, which swaps out the EVA toolhead for the Rat Rig one. It adds an updated Z drive and includes several other quality of life improvements. While this is a miniaturized version of the V Minion, the main differences are in the extrusions and the build volume, bringing it down from 180 millimeters in X, Y, and Z to 120 millimeters. It still uses a 12 millimeter rail for the X axes and a massive 15 millimeter for both the Y and Z, making it extremely rigid. The Z drive is completely reworked and replaces the 8mm lead screw on the V Minion with a belted system using a gear reduction similar to what you'd find on the Voron 2.4. For the bed, it uses the exact same one found on the Voron Zero, which is helpful when trying to source it. One of my biggest gripes with the V Minion build and the V Minion in general has been with its electronics. Both the power supply and the controller get installed in this sort of box or sidecar thing, and it always felt a bit like an afterthought. It's a bit awkward to move, and it also means if you need to replace anything on the tool head, you have to undo the entire sleeving so that way you can feed the new wire through it. With Tic Tac, both the controller and clipper host are located in an electronics box below the printer's bed, and that combined with an external power supply and cable chains means that the wiring is really tidy. Most of the parts for this build are just off the shelf components and depending on how many other 3D printer builds you've done, you may already have a handful of these available. However, there are five CNC parts needed. This includes one for the base, one for the bed, one for the tool head, one for the Z drive, and one for bolting the Z axis to the base. For these, I want to give a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, PCBWay. We've already talked about their high quality PCB services, and last year I got first-hand experience with their SLM printing, when they produced aluminum parts for the takeoff toolhead. Well, what you might not know is that they also offer custom CNC parts. They produced a set of each of the needed parts for me and Steve, and even anodized them. The parts turned out gorgeous. And while we chose to have the anodization done in black, they also offer a wide range of different colors and the option to have them bead blasted. If you need custom CNC parts for your next project, be sure to check out PCBWay and use my link in the description for $5 off your first order. We had a couple of other awesome sponsors for this build series. LDO provided two sets of 42 STH40 motors, along with an Orbiter 2.5 extruder and the V0 bed used in my build. Fadis also contributed Rapido 2 Ultra High Flow Hotends for both printer builds. While we could have used parts we already had on hand, since we were doing a collaborative build series, it allowed us to use mostly matching parts for the entire build. Everything else was self-sourced using the provided bomb. Between Steve and I, we already had a lot of the needed parts. Well, mostly Steve did, but for the things we didn't have, we used a combination of local sourcing as well as AliExpress. I have to give major credit to Steve on this build. 
I can't remember if it was someone in one of my live streams that first told me about Tic Tac or whether it was him, but I know that Steve has been wanting to build one of these printers for years. Once the idea for us to build one was entertained, he was totally on board and did a lot of the heavy lifting to make sure that things went as smooth as possible. This included cutting and tapping the extrusions, as well as modifying the CAD files to make it work with our specific hardware. From editing the files to use the specific heat inserts that I had on hand, to making various tweaks here and there, it was a really big part of this whole thing coming together. If you're not already subscribed to his channel, I highly recommend doing so, and I'll have it linked in the description. The last thing I want to touch on is the electronics we used for this build. For the controller, we went with the Mellow Fly Micro 4. This is a really compact board, which is exactly what we needed for this build, and it had the added benefit of being CAN compatible. For the clipper host, we went with the Raspberry Pi 2W so that we could try to fit it inside of the electronics bay. Moving on to the tool head. For this, we used the Mellowfly SHT36V3. Steve already had a couple of these on hand, so he was able to just send one over, and we felt like it would pair nicely with the Micro 4. We really wanted CAN bus so that we could minimize the wires coming off of the tool head, plus it meant that we could swap out the inductive probe for an eddy current sensor. Totally overkill for a printer of this size, but that was kind of the point. For the power supply, I had a 24 volt 10 amp external one I would picked up for a previous printer build that worked out perfectly. Now that we know a bit about the printer and the hardware that we decided to use, what was the build process like? For the most part, the assembly process is just referencing the CAD file, but there is a PDF file that will take you through assembling the frame as well as the rails. Unlike many of the other printer builds I've done over the years, this was just a fun project that was not put together to make kits and sell them, or even have any sort of a community form around it. Squirrelbrain had an idea for a crazy little printer that he decided to share, and it's nice that there's even a PDF to kind of get you started. Much of the hurdles we ran into during the build were due to order of operation because of the compact nature of this printer, or trying to specifically get the parts that we chose to fit in place. I specifically had to play around with the wires on my tool head board a bit to get everything to fit, as well as make some last minute adjustments to the eddy current mounting point so that way it would trigger when the nozzle touched the bed. The crimping and routing of cables around the Pi in the tiny electronics bay was also a little bit difficult, even though Steve had designed a standoff that gave us as much clearance as we possibly could. Another segment that took us two full streams was the firmware. This is something that wasn't provided, and given how far we deviated with her part choice from the initial bomb, it probably wouldn't have done us much good even if it had been. The time here was spent navigating Mello's instructions, which at times was unclear, building a config file from just a blank default config, and setting up EDNG for surface scanning and auto Z offsets. Watching it lay down that first Benchy on stream was such a rewarding feeling, even though mine came off shortly after because in my haste and excitement, I forgot to clean the bed. Since the build, I've done some testing to see what the printer's limitations are, and boy is this thing a beast. I thought for sure that the moving bed was going to be my biggest limitation, but I was able to run speed tests on this up to 40k acceleration without any skipped steps. The Rapido 2 Ultra High Flow is giving me about 20 cubic millimeters per second of flow with standard PLA, and that's without using any sort of extreme temps and just using a hardened steel nozzle. So if I did need to bump that up, what I would do is just swap it out with something like a CHT nozzle. Really, the biggest limitation that I've found is with its part cooling. While this makes sense considering most high-speed printers now are using something like a large side-mounted auxiliary fan to blow across the build plate, this does use a beefy 4028 in the tool head, but it's just not keeping up. Perhaps some optimization can be done with the fan shroud, and I might end up looking into upgrading the fan to a higher quality one. For the build stream, we went with Winston fans since it's what we had on hand, but they're rated at 6,000 RPM and 8.67 CFM, while something like the Delta fans are rated at 9,500 RPM and a massive 15.8 CFM. 
For now, I'll keep it in its existing config and play around with dialing in the PLA and PTG profiles a bit more, just being mindful of things like overhangs and bridging. There's a few other tweaks I'd like to do, like further optimizing the ending G code, as well as dialing in the tap functionality. Every once in a while, I do get an error at the start of a print, but overall, it's been working well. I'm really happy with how the build turned out on this little tank. And for anyone wondering what the weight is, even without it having a built-in power supply, it comes in at right around 11 pounds or just under five kilograms. It throws me off every time I go to lift this thing because it requires more strength than you would expect given its little size. If you're watching this and wondering from a practicality standpoint why you would build one of these, well, you wouldn't. Self-sourcing is always going to be more expensive and even having a handful of the components sponsored, it still ended up costing us somewhere between $350 to $400 approximately per build. To put things into perspective, my first V0 was self-sourced and that ended up being north of $1,000 and that was four years ago. This is a build that we decided to do for fun and for the challenge of putting together such a compact machine. If you have a handful of spare printer parts and the ability to do some CAD work, all of these step files are available on the printables project page. So you can customize this as much as you want to make it work with your specific hardware. With the growing popularity of CNC milling or routing in the 3D printing space, if you have something like the Milo or the upcoming Voron Cascade, you can cut out those aluminum parts yourself, which would also save you some additional money. Squirrelbrain really designed something special with this machine, and it was a real treat watching it all come together. My V-Minion now has a sibling, and I have another great cantilever printer in my arsenal of machines. And that's been Tic Tac. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better idea of what the project is and what the process is like around sourcing and building one. I'll have links in the description over to the project page if you want to find out more. And if you missed the stream series, I will also have a link to the playlist so you can go check that out. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!